Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo, and welcome to the start of my Noob Tips series for Metal Gear Solid 5. Finally decided to bring the Noob Tips back, and I feel that MGS5 is the perfect game to do so because it's actually a rather complicated experience. But if you can just look at things in the right light, you'll find that it's actually all very simplistic, and it's really up to you as the player to decide how far you want to go and how much you want to learn along the way to improve your experience. So of course the most important part of the game outside of the combat is your freaking mother base. It's something that you get early on and for me it was something that it was initially kind of confusing. There's a lot of stuff going on here, there's a lot of stuff to understand, and once you understand a lot of the mechanics in mother base it's definitely going to change what you do when you're out in the field. So this is the perfect place to start. We're gonna go ahead and get welcome home by D-Dog. He's such a cute little puppy, look at him. Oh my god. Honestly, I could just stand here and look at him all day. He's so cute, it's ridiculous. Tiny little dog walking around the aircraft carrier. All of your people who respect you so very much, even though I'm covered in blood because admittedly the mission that I was just doing didn't exactly go very well. So this is my mother base. You can run around it. And pretty much immediately after you gain access to Mother Base, you're going to have a slew of options. Some of them are going to become available over time, but we're going to break down the most important stuff. If you go ahead and open up your iDroid, this is where you're going to make everything happen. Now, first and foremost, you have your development. It's the first thing that you're interest, introduced to. Ocelot's going to show you how to do all of this, so you probably already know how, but we're going to go ahead and go over it anyways. You have a couple different menu selections. You can go to Weapons and Items. We can go to Buddy Equipment. And we can, of course, upgrade our helicopter. So you pretty much just go through. You can tab on over. All of this really is personal preference. Um, you know, you're really going to have to decide how you want to play this. The nice thing is that every single weapon, every single handgun, shotgun, grenade, piece of armor, you know exactly how you have to unlock them. And for the most part, it's all about the amount of GMP that you have, which you pretty much always seem to have enough of and the level of your R&D team in this case. So in order to develop the splitter camo, splitter camo I should say, I need to have an R&D team level of seven. My current team level is five. We'll talk a little bit later about how you're actually gonna go ahead and raise your R&D team level. So honestly, if you don't like spreadsheets, you probably should just leave right now and figure this all out on your own because there's a lot we're gonna talk about and a lot of it's really complex. But basically everything when it comes to R&D, whether it be for your helicopters, for your buddies, or for Snake and his own equipment, is all player choice. What weapons do you want to develop, and what sort of playstyles do you need those weapons to complement? In my case, I've stuck with a lot of the suppressed equipment. However, the first thing that I did go ahead and purchase was the Renault sniper rifle because I knew that I was going to need it for assassination missions early on when I just wanted to kind of stay out and take care of things. But you can see there's a lot of other tools here. We've got shields, you've got different hand grenades and decoys you'll eventually be able to unlock. All of it, again, depending on your R&D team level, as well as a slew of other things. You can see these capture cages here actually require biological material, as well as a black carrot. So this is actually to support small animals. Um, you know, if you want to save more sheep, I'm all about saving the sheep, as you guys saw in my last video. Uh, but basically, it's really straightforward what is here. You know, it seems a lot more confusing than it is, but it's just, you know, it's real simple. And in fact, I've reached R&D level 5, so I'm going to go ahead and develop my battle dress for D-Horse, which is going to give him some camouflage and hopefully a little bit of armor, which is awesome. And I've already developed some of my stuff for my helicopter, so... While this menu seems really confusing, and you're probably sitting there thinking, what am I supposed to develop next? I don't know what to do. Like, what should I be focusing on? Again, it's 100% up to you. There is no need to search out what other people think about what you should develop. Just do what's going to fit your personal playstyle. Moving out, we're going to take a look at resources. So resources are all of the things that you've gathered throughout the course of your missions. And again, once you realize how important resources are to the develop of Mother Base, you're going to be much more... Um, aware of them when you're out in the field and you're going to go out of your way to collect them. So we've got fuel resources, biological material, common metals, and minor metals. We've also got unprocessed materials. We even have medicinal plants. And then you can see that we also have weapons and vehicles when the time comes. You'll be able to actually go ahead and either sell these vehicles or you know do a number of different things with them. Um, I'm not really in the business of selling just yet because I haven't come to that point in the game where I'm like really aware of what money and credits are. So we're not too worried about selling. Early on, I would just say collect as much of this stuff as you can because it is vital to the development of Mother Base. Now, probably one of the most complex and difficult things to understand in all of this menu is staff management. Now, when you actually go out in the field and you use a Fulton recovery device to bring back a soldier, 
no matter what their skill level is, they come on back, they're automatically put into a team. And we can see that we have the R&D team, base development, as well as the support unit. Right now, we only have Miller on base development. You can see that Ocelot is still in the waiting room. And you can see a plethora of other soldiers that we picked up along the way on R&D, as well as on the support team. Now, the really the basic... The basis of this entire system and understanding where you should put different staff members all comes down to these abilities that you see on the right side of the screen. We have a sword, we have a wrench, we've got a couple hexagons, a box, um, sort of a Wi-Fi signal, and some pills. These are actually more simple than they seem. The sword stands for the combat unit skill. The wrench stands for the R&D um, skill. You have the box, which stands for the support skill. You have the waves, or the Wi-Fi signal, which of course stands for Intel, and then you have the pill, which is of course about medbay, their medicinal skill. So you can see all these guys are pretty low key right now. Um, you know, it's not really going to matter that much where each of them go, but if you want to start kind of metagaming this whole thing, you're free to do so based on what each of those skills means. And I'll have thrown them up on the screen for you guys, so you can get a better understanding of what each of them says, because sadly the, the game doesn't tell you. I guess it's kind of straightforward, but I see a lot of people asking about that, so I definitely wanted to make it aware. You can also see the language that, is, that the character speaks, so perhaps it's important to have someone who speaks more than two languages even on the support team in certain situations. Um, you know, that might be something that you want to do. Now you can see there's another important element, and that is the specialist skill. All of these guys, they're just kind of standard Joe Schmoes. Sly Harrier, good for him, he speaks English and Russian. Running Whale, good for him, he speaks Ukrainian, English, and Russian. However, if we look at Okre Capybara here, you can see that he's also an interpreter. So not only does he speak Russian and English, he can actually interpret them. So he is assigned to my support unit because he's going to be able to simultaneously interpret any Russian that has spoken to Snake out on the battlefield. So those are really the things you want to keep an eye on. They're going to be really useful. And you can see that he also has a support skill of C, of C. So he's pretty much higher than anyone else on the list. So that's really what this whole system is about. And as you go throughout the game, you're going to gain, um, you know, staff members with higher abilities. Um, you can see we've got a diplomat here, lessons, instances, or troubles with the unit. Um, we've got the gunsmith. He's assigned to the R&D to relax shotgun development and usage requirements, and he also enables the development of derivative models. That was a good one to read that way. That way. Um, and I don't really have anybody else too special here, but basically the best way to obtain higher skilled units out in the battlefield is to make sure that you're only using your Fulton recovery device on soldiers that would seem to be highly skilled they can be found in side ops they can be found in missions and there's often something to designate that they are actually more skilled than other players sometimes the game just tells you in the case of a side up hey you're going after a highly skilled target you should probably recover him with the fulton recovery device rather than murder him so you can actually gain his help back here on mother base um, you can see we also have the ability to access all staff if you wanted to kind of move these guys around and see what's going on you can see people who were killed in action or former members again a lot more simple than it seems. It does, you know, feel kind of complex at first. But once you understand what each of those abilities stand for, you can start to kind of put these people where they belong. Now, moving certain members from, say, R&D to the base development unit will also increase the level of that. That is how you increase your R&D level or your base development unit or your support unit is by adding more members to that actual unit. So there you go. So if you want to make that sniper rifle, you need to keep increasing the skill level and possibly even the number of staff members on the R&D team until that R&D level reaches that level required for said weapon. It's really as simple as that. Not so complex after all, right? Moving into the base facilities, this is where all of those good materials that you should have been collecting out in the battlefield, but you didn't collect, are required. Trust me, I am one of those people. You can see that I have the ability to construct a command platform. However, I do not have enough miner metal or enough fuel resources. So I have to make sure that when I'm out in the field, I'm always on the lookout for those things. You can find them inside of bases, inside of houses, locations that have enemies, locations that don't have enemies. They're all over the place. Keep an eye out for them. They're going to be really useful. Now, in terms of GNP, there is one main way to gain GMP, and that is to find raw diamonds out in the field. They can be brought back, they're worth a lot of money, and they're going to instantly increase your GMP, usually by about 10k per handful. So that's definitely something to keep an eye out for. And you'll see that depending on whatever we're trying to establish from other base, it's going to require different materials. The support platform needs common metal as well as biological materials, um, you know, fuel resources and biological for base development platform. It's all really actually very simple. 
Um, if you go into the database, this is something that's available all the time, not just when you're in Mother Base. It's basically just a nice little place to start to learn what each of these medicinal plants do. So if you're out in the field, you're collecting all these plants and you want to actually know what they're used for, this is the place to come. Ocelot usually will tell you when you actually go ahead and pick up any of the plants, what they do, but in case you forgot, you can go ahead and do that. You can see there's also code names that are awarded by doing different things and the game will actually tell you. So if you want to earn the B code name, it's awarded to soldiers who use handguns lethal to achieve great victories. So the game, you know, it has a lot of incentive to be replayed. <laughs> I think Hideo and the team completely understood that and they went above and beyond to make sure that there was a lot of reason for the player to go out and to play the game in a number of different ways. So. That's just a brief look at Mother Base. There are some other small things I want to show you while we're here. Obviously, d dogs still being awesome and cute. But one thing that you can do, which is actually something you should do every time you come back to Mother Base. And also, it's very important that you come back to Mother Base. Don't just stay out on missions forever. You know, come back to Mother Base. It's going to boost the morale of all of your team members. And take a shower, man, because you sneak, snake. snake. He's crawling around in the desert, he's crawling around in the dirt, he's crawling around in the brush, he's carrying around sheep, he's fighting with bears. You just need to take a shower sometimes, and you can see that everyone's going to be happier for it. Also, if you feel like just beating the crap out of someone, I don't know why, but these dudes are like all about it. They like, they tell you, hey boss, can I train with you? And then you can just like, you know, Fulton recovery device them and waste $300 for your own enjoyment. Bye! All right, so I need to interrupt myself because I nearly forgot something and you guys would have killed me for it And that's how to actually customize your mother base as well as your helicopter and your emblem Now this actually has to be done from inside of the helicopter after leaving mother base But you see you open up your iDroid you have the option to customize you can change the camo pattern on your helicopter You can go ahead and go with a solid color, which I've chosen pink. There's a very good reason for that It's not just because I wanted to choose pink It's actually because the SAS used pink because it's the best option for camouflage when moving in a desert environment. It actually makes um, the helicopter nearly, or whatever it was, in this case it was the Land Rovers that the SAS used, practically invisible at nighttime. So I thought that was really cool. You'll see you can also swap out the guns. You can also swap out the chassis for the Blackfoot once you've upgraded it and a bunch of other stuff. Um, you can also modify your emblem. In this case, I have the sheep because I'm all about saving the sheep. And you can change the color of Mother Base as well. There's only a few colors. They're sort of weird off pastel colors. And then last but not least, you can actually alter the avatar that she went ahead and created earlier on in the beginning of the Phantom Pain. So I knew I had to get that in and I will now uninterrupt myself and we'll get back to what we were doing. <laughs> if you guys have any more questions about Mother Base, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. Boss, have you lost your mind? <laughs> Maybe you're not the big boss we hope for after all. <laughs> okay, they don't like when you do that apparently. I had no idea. So don't go and Fulton device the members of your team on the ship. As much as they threaten and ask you if that they want to train with you. I mean, that guy said it to me like six times. Hey boss, I'd love to train with you. Um, don't beat them up and then Fulton device them because it's no bueno. So as I was saying... <laughs> If you guys have any other questions for me regarding the operation of Mother Base, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. Now, as I said, you have a lot of those different units that are available. I want to briefly go over this one more time inside of your staff management. As you increase the number of platforms and the different, you know, components within your, you know, ship, this stuff also going to level up. You're going to be able to expand Mother Base and there's going to be a lot more things that you're going to have to manage. It's not going to get any more complex, but there's just going to be... You know, you're going to have to keep an eye on it if you really want to make sure that Mother Base is growing and prospering. At the end of the day, it's just going to let you get cooler stuff to mess around with in the field. So it's definitely a place to focus on. Don't just blow it off. Early game, it's okay. I understand you're just getting into it, but come back here and learn how Mother Base works as soon as you possibly can. If you have any personal questions for me about the game or, again, anything regarding Mother Base that I didn't answer here... Feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. I will be sure to answer that. I'm also sure there is a handful of people out there who are going to watch this who are also very talented at Metal Gear. Not saying that I am, but there are people out there who are very talented who will also be willing to answer your questions. Let's make sure that the comment section below for all of these new tips videos inside of the Metal Gear series are just a wealth of knowledge. We managed to do that with XCOM. I would love to do that again. And you guys can look forward because the next episode of new tips for Metal Gear Solid 4 is going to be taking a look at side ops. Not only my favorite thing to do in the game but a great way to get acquainted with the tactical open world nature of metal gear solid 5 
get back to your mother base, paint it some cool colors, make an awesome logo, and uh, be sure to keep on managing those staff members. You gotta make sure they're in line and take a shower, because like I said, when you're covered in blood and you smell, people don't like you as much.